welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler in AWS. Uh, if you watch part one, you'd be really familiar by now with pCluster Manager, which is a graphical user interface for managing your parallel clusters. Uh, we had Sean Smith from our Solution Architect team in Seattle uh, giving us a grand tour of the, the cluster design, creation, and deployment, and management uh, uh, tools inside pCluster Manager. Today, we're actually going to pick up the discussion um, where we've clicked the Create button and something's gone wrong. And we're going to talk about a fairly typical scenario where that might happen. And we're going to show you how pCluster Manager gives you the data you need to debug it very, very quickly. Uh, all in the one console. And then right after that, we're going to talk about job management. We're going to get into um, uh, visualization. There's a lot of stuff to discover inside pCluster Manager, and you'll get to really, really be pretty happy with a lot of its integrations. Anyway, hope you get a lot out of this talk. We're going to pick up the discussion where we left off last week uh, with Sean. Right. And now you've got very much, this is very much like what a CloudFormation console would look like in the in the AWS console as it tells you something's in progress, right? Exactly. Um, and so it's mirroring the CloudFormation stack events here. Um, you can see I got a, um, a failure here. So I got a, a create failed. Um, and to debug that, I can debug it directly within the console here. Um, and I can see, oh, I don't have I am attach role policy. Um, uh, and so that's something you know I could go ahead and add to my um, policy. But uh, if you have a cluster that fails, you can click on the, the stack events easily here, and it'll take you directly to that that failure message. Um, right. And so, by the way, we should we should fess up to everybody that we contrived that this would fail, <laughs> right? Because we wanted to show you this failure mode. We wanted to actually be able to show you that that you can you can do some actual helpful debugging in the console now. <laughs> so next step, I'll, I'll show you to uh, I'll show you a cluster that hasn't failed. So let me go um, grab this Chromax cluster. Um, so once the cluster is created, um, we can see uh, we can always access that cluster configuration, and we can download it if we wanted to, let's say, share it with a colleague. Let's say um, our other scientist wants to know what's the best way to run Chromax on AWS. Just send them the configuration file, and they're off to the races. I, I usually answer questions people ask me with a with a, with a YAML file. Uh, <laughs> totally. Anyway, cool. <laughs> Send them a link to this video in the YAML file. So the next screen, we can see instances. Um, uh, so this gives us uh, some information on it. Um, if the cluster is stopped, we can also stop the head node, meaning you can have a, a cluster that has no instances running and um, costs very little. But at any moment, you can start it back up. And then right. it gives us a link to the logs if we wanted to view the logs on that cluster. And of course, you can see the storage. You can see stack events, as we've already seen. Storage. Yeah. Um, um, job one, scheduling. Job scheduling. Yeah. So this is probably new from last time. Um, so it gives us an overview of our job queue. Right now, I don't have anything in the job queue, but I have the ability to submit a job. So um, let's say I go and submit a job. I want to have two nodes, maybe 192 tasks because I'm running on these really beefy HPC 6A instances. Right. Uh, and I can give it a, a, a path to a script. And then it's going to go. Um, and now let me say uh, my job takes one and a half hours to complete running on two nodes. Um, I can get a cost estimate. Um, and this this just does on-demand pricing. So if you, if you have special pricing, take that. Um, take yep. this as the upper bound. but. It's going to give me a projected job cost of eight dollars and sixty four cents. Eight and a half bucks to run, to run a, a yeah, cool. That's yeah, to run a, a two hundred core job. Um, pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, I and, don't know how and, much coffee costs in London, but that's that's around one and a half coffees in in Seattle. Hang on, no, eight eight and a half bucks. I think that's like half a coffee at Starbucks, isn't mm -hmm. it? Um, anyway, but that's that's actually pretty cool. Um, because I mean, it's going to cost you eight and a half bucks to get a job run across one hundred ninety two cores right now without waiting um no yep. fire knuckling around we're just going to go and execute it right now that's and it's giving you a job list a, a cost estimate this is cool makes a lot of sense okay and so so we can literally so honestly you can literally submit this job through the ui now manage it through the ui quick submit um it's going to go into the queue um it will give me if i click on the the job id it'll yep. give me more information about that job um so i can see all of the parameters that I typically had to go into the CLI and, and you know describe that job. I can kill it right here. So if I say, oh, man, this really should have finished by now, 
um, I can go ahead yeah. and stop it. And then I can see the state either running or uh, configuring or, or um, completed. Right. And here. in fact, configuring at this point in this context really means where, I mean, this is a dynamic cluster. This is an elastic cloud cluster. So we're spinning up the instances on demand to run this job. Um, exactly. And that might take uh, three, four minutes actually, to get the instances up, right? Uh, we can actually view the instances here as they're coming up. So you can see it just added two HPC 6A instances, um, and they've already gone into running. Um, right. So it's only going to be a short amount of time before the job actually flips over into into a run state. Right. Right. That is that is super. This is really super. And all of this is happening in a web browser. There's you could be doing this from a coffee shop. Yeah, you can do this from from your iPhone. You could be doing this using your iPhone sitting in a bar on a Friday night. Probably yeah. not a good idea to do that. It's probably not a best use case, but <laughs> maybe that's where the, the budgets come in. Yeah. Best practice is actually to review the results of jobs at the bar. Don't submit jobs from the bar. It's maybe maybe better better advice that we can give to people. All right. So show me the shell button because that actually uses the the SSM to get the shell on the cluster rather right. than doing an SSH direct, right? Right. So so if I click on that shell button, it's going to take me directly to this head node. Um, and I can see, OK, I'm, I'm logged in as my cluster user, so I'm EC2 user. Um, and I've got all of my Slurm commands that, I, you know, that I'm familiar with. And I can see um, I've got uh, these different queues. So I've got my HPC 6A queue, C6I on demand, G4DN, and C6I spot all up and running like we configured previously. Um, if I run SQ, so this is what I was showing earlier in, in the browser, it's just describing my job queue. We can see that this job has gone into running. Right. Um, and once it's running, you can actually hop onto one of these instances. So let's say you wanted to figure out what was running on that instance. You can just take that, that node name um, and you have to put either one or two, depending on which one you're connecting to and SSH directly to there. Um, now, once here, uh, I'm going to install a package called HTOP, and that'll allow us to see um, what's running on the instance. So we'll give that a moment to install. Now I can run HTOP, um, and you can see that I've got all 96 cores fully fully utilized, and um, uh, I'm doing pretty well on, on memory utilization. And then if I um, pull this bottom menu down, I can see the actual um, processes that are running. Um, so this is really helpful. I use this all the time when I'm getting um, new HPC codes up and running to, to, to make sure that I'm properly utilizing all the resources. I'm not spinning up too many processes, um, yeah. and I'm not exceeding memory. And more to the point, you don't have any cores laying around doing nothing. Um, yeah. That's exactly. super important. Great. And there's no swapping going on. So, yeah, life is good. All right. This is really cool. And so we've, I mean, this is the first, I mean, I, I just want to point out you know the obvious here. This is this is the first moment we've actually had to use a shell to access a cluster, and it's really it's just we're just doing that so that we can fill around and have a look. You could be still monitoring the entire cluster from out in the web browser. You've submitted a job through the web browser. Um, this right. Is, Pay cluster manager is really going strength to strength. Yeah, and I think I mean I think the the first thing that that people are going to want um, when they see this is access to this, and so. If you spin this up at, at your company and you want to give an additional user access, you can go down here to the Users tab. Um, and then you can enter in their email. So if I enter in Booth's email and click Create User, um, it'll add him, send him an email, giving him a temporary password and login um, information. Um, and then I can upgrade his access. So right now he's guest, which gives him very little permissions. But if I wanted to give him uh, the ability to see and access that cluster that I just set up. Right. After a job completes, um, it's helpful to, sometimes we want to view the result using a, a graphical desktop, and that's where the DCV portion comes in. Right. So just by clicking that, that one button, um, I get a remote desktop on the head node. Um, and I can come in here, and I've already got this output loaded in um, a program called BMD. Yeah. that I can view um, the result of my Gromax simulation here. I mean, you've just done seven things that most people can't can't do on their clusters, right? Um, right. It's very rare that you actually get graphical access to an HBC cluster at all, uh, let alone any time you want it. Um, uh, yeah, I, it, 
there's there's a whole pile of this is this is going to go into my list of of the 10 impossible things we can do this is really cool nice nice work all right well hey uh thanks for showing all that to us this afternoon um you guys are continuing to work on p cluster manager there's more there are more features going into this thing um how does what's a, just a, a i guess a quick hit once somebody's running p cluster manager because they've launched the CloudFormation stack how do they update it is it just merely yeah. a case of just delete the stack and launch the stack again? Yeah, so there's um, two different ways. If um, you can update it by creating a new CloudFormation stack, and you can do that at the same time you have your old one up. So kind of a, a blue-green deployment. OK, I want to try out uh, the new features, but um, I want to make sure that everything is OK for my environment. Yeah. Um, and then the second way is you can actually upgrade the um, the UI in place. So if you take a look at our GitHub repository, there's some instructions for um, updating the container image that's running the pcluster manager. OK, cool. Uh, and there's and so if, people, if folks want to go down that path, they absolutely can. But I like the blue-green deployment idea um, of actually just having two pcluster managers up at the same time. You just seamlessly switch from one to the other. That's yeah. Kind of nice. It's probably worth calling out that the actual the UI versus the cluster are two um, uh, two different things. So by by deleting that that P cluster manager stack, um, all of your clusters are still there, and and actually all the clusters that you've created with version three, um, are 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 will you will see here regardless of whether you created them with P cluster manager or not. Right, right, and that's that that's a key point, right? Um, the clusters have got their own life cycle. P cluster manager is just a console for looking into that universe and work and helping you manage it, but it doesn't attach its own destiny to the clusters themselves, right? And so, right. so and, and any changes, of course, you make to those clusters through pCluster Manager, those changes get reflected in the config file that the cluster itself is carrying forward. Right. And um, we see this um, resulting in, in some interesting use cases. So let's say you, you've got a um, programmatic uh, need to create clusters. Let's say you're a weather forecasting company and you want to create a cluster every day at 7 a.m. to run your daily forecast, you can use the pCluster API to kick off that cluster creation, um, and then you can kick off your job on that cluster. And then the pCluster manager really becomes just your portal for viewing um, that cluster and accessing it um, uh, and, and seeing kind of what your automation is doing in that case. OK, this is, this is pretty neat. Uh, you can actually do an awful lot of, you can do an awful lot of stuff here. All right. Um, we're going to call it quits here because I think uh, I think uh, uh, this is pretty neat. We actually just want people to get out there and give it a try. Um, so as I said before, it, this is the this is the link to the GitHub repo if you just want to go and launch from there. Um, so so go over here. You'll find several launch buttons for actually launching the stack in, the, in different regions. Um, and if you want to get an actual workshop experience, stepping you through all of the steps of getting the installation done and then trying something out and just taking you for a tour of it, um, then go head over to hpcworkshops.com and give that a whirl. Or, as I mentioned before, come and stalk Sean on Twitter uh, and ask him for some for some help. <laughs> Thanks, Boo. Cool. Uh, and for everybody else out there, if you've got any ideas that you want to see us uh, dig into in a future tech short, please come and find us on Twitter. Our DMs are open. Uh, and until next time, uh, hope you enjoy. Uh, I hope you enjoy using P Cluster Manager. <laughs>